A few years ago, a high school in East Palo Alto drew a lot of attention because of its unusual approach to racial desegregation. Ravenswood, Ravenswood High School was a predominantly black campus surrounded by white schools. Like so many black ghetto schools, its problems were familiar. Poor academic showing by many of its students, low morale among the students and faculty, widespread vandalism, and so on. In 1971, the school board of the Sequoia School District implemented an all-volunteer program, giving the students the freedom to, to, to go to the school of their own choice. The key factor in the plan was Ravenswood. The board decided that the only way to draw white students to the school was to make it more attractive, so it took a chance. Some of the best teachers in the district were pulled together, and along with students and teachers, they went about the task of revamping the school's curriculum. In addition, they radically changed the school's class structure by implementing a new flexible schedule. All conventional rules governing student conduct were pushed aside. The student-teacher ratio was slashed way below that of the district norm. Ravenswood, in effect, became an experiment in alternative education. The result was phenomenal. In the school year 1969-1970, the black enrollment at Ravenswood was around 95%. After the volunteer transfer program went into effect the following year, whites accounted for nearly 50% of the student population. The plan had succeeded way beyond anyone's expectations. For the parents, students, and teachers, that first year became known as the Ravenswood experience. And meeting with some students from the various junior highs and finding what goes the most there. For example, when we go out to Portola Valley, we're going to go out with uh, films and slides. This is the first time. They're very big on soccer this out there. This meeting is part of the Ravenswood experience. The teacher is giving these students a pep talk on their next big effort to recruit more white students to their school. People, when they were here last time, looked around and they saw a lot of happy students. And they were puzzled, you know, because, you know, going to school is supposed to hurt, you know, and people aren't supposed to look happy. And this was one of the things that struck them the most, that there were very happy students on campus. What makes these students, who are all volunteer transfers from, from white neighborhoods, so enthusiastic about Ravenswood? They themselves say that a big part of it has to do with how differently they're treated here compared to other high schools. You're given a lot more responsibility for yourself here. You know, like Ron said, you know, you've got to make the decision within yourself that you're going to, you know, take on responsibilities and things like that. And they're not, for, you know, they're not saying do it or you're going to be suspended. And that, that kind of, uh, you know, atmosphere is really conducive to growing up and to losing, you know, a lot of your naivety and things like that. You know within yourself you're required to do certain things and you're going to do it. You know, with nobody housing you about it, look, Rufus, you either go to class or see me in my office, you know, and get suspended. So, I mean, it's more or less programming yourself, you know, well, I got to go to class, I'm going. The teachers think that giving the student more responsibility is conducive to the whole learning process. Uh, here, a student uh, feels freer to really question the teacher's uh, uh, approach in a classroom. If you have a given unit uh, that you're going to present, the student may say, why should we have this unit? Uh, uh, he'll, he'll challenge the teacher on almost anything. Teachers here are more concerned with how kids learn, at least this is what I feel, and not uh, so much with what they learn. So the focus becomes one of working out with the kid and finding out what kind of difficulties he's had, rather than say, here's the material, uh, you know, you learn it, and if you score such and such, you get a grade. Okay, and then the book also mentioned that the birth control pill is like the liberation for the black woman, meaning that you have a right to decide how many children that you would like to have. Walking through some of the classrooms like this one on the black woman, you notice one disturbing fact. Many of them are segregated. Students say that's due to cultural differences. Teachers admit there is a conflict. Changes at Ravenswood that have attracted the white middle class student haven't necessarily fulfilled the needs of the black students. And there are differing needs in many cases. Because they want their sons in. I think the conflict does come in, though, when we model the school to attract white students and therefore subtly don't model it to attract black students. And I think this is a real problem here at school. The black students and the white students here know it. And we get into the same situation each year with recruiting because we're, we're trying to uh, meet some kind of uh, integration guidelines. And we're trying to do that by um, attracting some students and subtly not attracting others, and I think it, it caused an awful lot of friction and conflict on campus. 
This is why some parents in the black community are complaining. They feel that unlike the white students, many of the black students are not as well prepared to take advantage of the innovations at Ravenswood. I look around, I see a lot of precious minds going to waste just because they fail to understand and to realize how to take advantage of this, this free time. It seems like I see an awful lot of precious time wasted as well as a lot of precious mind wasted. Despite this problem, there is a general feeling here that the bringing together of both races has been a good experience. Principal Clarence Cryer agrees with this feeling. Our experience last year was not only a new experience in, in education in, in, on the peninsula, but it was an experience in, in students being able to live together in, in an environment which was different from what they had experienced previously. If Ravenswood hadn't never been desegregated, we would have been, you know, blacks. We just, in high school, four years around blacks. I think that the white people coming here help because when we get out on our own, graduate from college, and get on jobs, we work with white people, we won't even know how to relate to them. Now that we're in school, we learn how to relate to them in the class, and when we go out on our own, we grow out, grow up, you know, get old, we'll know how to relate to them. We just go in the office and sit up there and just look at them, won't know how to even talk to them in school. At least we do learn how to talk to them. I think it's better yeah, like that. First, I really resented the white people coming here. You know, like, I even had some hostile feelings towards like I wanted to beat them up or take their money or whatever they had but like as I just sit down and thought about it you know I just said I guess it's their choice to come whatever school they want to go to and you know like now I see them I speak to them have nice relationships with a couple of them we're not going to uh, you know break down uh, racial barriers or understand different socioeconomic levels or different cultures in four years. You know, we're, we're not going to do it in, in the time we're in school. We're not going to do it in the time we're in high school. It's a lifelong kind of thing. You know, I'm never going to understand, you know, um, what life is like for, for Loveless, you know, or what it's like to be black, nor is he going to understand what it's like for me to be white. And so you're not going to learn that in four years. You're not going to learn it in a lifetime. And it's a, it's a thing you've got to, you know, keep on trying to know for, you know, as long as you're around. The rank and file of the people in the white community, uh, while they may support integration in theory, are really not behind it 100 percent. And I, I think that we, and I think that uh, in spite of the fact that we have a very good staff in the Sequoia Union High School District, that many of the teachers in the other schools are not all that enthusiastic about not only desegregation, but uh, about alternative schools. And so we, there are times when I think we're very much alone here at Ravenswood in trying to recruit kids, and that uh, we get the feeling that the whole, the success of this school as a, as a spearheaded, a spearhead school in desegregation and uh, an alternative school is really dependent upon us alone. There's another dark cloud hanging over Ravenswood's future as well. The student population has dropped from 1,100 down to 950 this year. This is because white students did not transfer in such strong numbers as they did last year. It's estimated that if the present enrollment trends continue, Ravenswood population will decrease so much that the district will be forced to shut the school down completely. I think in the future, this system, it's going to be better, much better. It's kind of painful right now, but it's going to get better. It's got to get better. The Sequoia School District Board has promised to keep Ravenswood going at least through the next school year. After that, the picture is uncertain, especially since white student transfers decreased this year. Principal Clarence Cryer thinks that white parents are still reluctant to send their kids to Ravenswood. He thinks more publicity is needed about the true nature of Ravenswood. But black students in the area are also transferring out of Ravenswood. Some of them for academic reasons, others for, uh, for a, because the white schools have a stronger sports program. District officials say that the enrollment at Ravenswood will be down to 600 by 1975-76, and the blacks will make up 70% of that student population. And although the board is committed to an integration through a voluntary program, the board of trustees won't hesitate in closing down Ravenswood and scattering the black students to the district's six other schools. For the people at Ravenswood, then, their fight is to keep the school alive. And the only way they're going to do that is to convince the white students in the other schools that Ravenswood is a good thing, both academically and racially. <laughs>